Can you really switch from a completely non-tech background into a DevOps engineer role? And that too, to make it even harder, a remote DevOps engineer role. This is a very frequently asked question. And well, let me tell you about my story. My name is Imran and I graduated as a civil engineer, worked 12 to 14 hours a day. And today I'm working as a DevOps engineer remotely. In this video, I'll walk you through my journey step by step the challenges I faced, how I learned tech from scratch, the projects and communities that helped me, and finally, how I landed my first DevOps job. And not just for a DevOps job, a remote DevOps job as a fresher. If you are someone from a non-tech background or you're just starting out and thinking, is it even possible? Then this video is for you. So let's rewind back to 2018. I graduated in civil engineering and I got my first job as a site engineer. Sounds good on paper, right? But the reality was minimum 12 to 14 hours of shift, sometimes even more non-stop if the concrete was being poured. There was no work-life balance. Honestly, I had no time to think about upskilling and no time to explore other options as well. This was my life for about two years and then the COVID hit. Like many others, my career took a sudden turn during COVID. Through a friend, I got a job at a logistics company in back-end operations. Now, this wasn't tech at all. It was basically operations work, Excel, coordination, managing processes, Salesforce, training, and all that stuff. I spent almost four years there. And while the job wasn't exciting, it gave me a very important thing, time. And since I was working from home, I could finally spend two to four hours every day learning something new. And that was the opening I needed. And then comes the next question, how I decided on DevOps. So one of my senior and a very good friend of mine from my college and school, Dinesh Solanki, he was already working in DevOps space. One day he said, So Imran, why don't you try with DevOps? Start with Linux and I'll help you out step by step. And that simple advice changed everything. In August 2022, I searched best Linux course on YouTube. And that was literally the first step of my DevOps journey. Here's how I structured all my learning. And this is something you can also follow. So I started with the fundamentals. So first is Linux. I went all in. I actually uninstalled Windows and installed Ubuntu as my main operating system. And that forced me to live inside Linux every day. And that was the best decision ever. And let me tell you, if you are learning Linux or if you want to learn Linux, do this you are going to do 100% better. After that, I learned Git and GitHub, version control, pushing my notes and like my code, my notes, my scripts, my learnings to my GitHub repository and learned all the basic commands as well. And after that, I focused on learning the networking fundamentals. I didn't just memorize them. I visualized how everything works, handshakes, requests, protocols, everything. I try to visualize them and that helped me a lot in learning them. These were the fundamentals and after learning these, I moved on to the tools and I did not follow one fixed roadmap. There is no perfect roadmap. Instead, I broke down DevOps into core areas such as cloud infrastructure, then infrastructure as code, containerization, container orchestration, monitoring, CI, CD, configuration management, security, observability. These are the core areas of DevOps. There are many more. And I selected my tools based on these core areas. And then I started learning one by one. My strategy was very simple. Two weeks to learn a tool. And then another two weeks to build something, to, get, to try my hands-on practice, to do my hands-on practice with that tool. And this strategy really worked for me. It really helped me in understanding the core concepts and you know, basic fundamentals of each tool, which is very important. So this strategy really worked for me. If you want to adapt or use this strategy, feel free to use it. Now here's the game changer. I didn't just learn in silence. I started learning in public. So every day, whatever I learned, I shared it on LinkedIn and Twitter and not just screenshots and random tags. I actually structured my post to add value. That visibility brought me connections. I was able to meet creators like Kunal Kushwaha, Piyush from Tech Tutorials with Piyush, Abhishek Viramalla, Shubham from Train with Shubham, and then Nasiullah Chaudhary from Cloud Champ. I was able to meet all these creators 
and learn a lot from them. Along the way, I also found two mentors who really shaped my journey, Savinder Puri and Guru Murthy Raghupati or Guru as we call him. Whenever I felt stuck or had doubts, they were always there to guide me, clear things up and point me in the right direction. I even co-founded a community called Growing Community where we helped each other exchange ideas, build network and like it is still going very strong. We do weekly calls every now and then and it is still going very strong. If you want to join that community, link is in the description. You can join our community. And this journey also led me to become a part of the AWS Community Builder program. I joined the community. I learned a lot from there and I, I even contributed back and I'm still a com AWS Community Builder. This is my third year being an AWS Community Builder. So it is a really good community. And along the way, I started writing technical blogs, documenting my projects, sharing my experiences, sharing my learnings. It is also another way of giving back to the community while also building my personal brand. And you should also start learning in public if you're not doing until now. And here's something I want you to try right now. So start your own learning in public journey today. You are already watching this video. You are learning something new. So why not just pause it Take a quick screenshot and after you finish watching this video, post it on LinkedIn and Twitter. Share one thought you found useful, add your perspective and put it out there. Just start your journey today. This single step could be the start of your visibility, your network and your own transformations. So one of the biggest things that helped me land my interviews was my projects. The standout one was my Netflix clone DevSecOps project. So in that, I took a simple Netflix clone app, built a CI CD around it, added security checks like image scanning, dependency scanning, sonar cube, sonar gates, using sonar cube. So I added all those things regarding security. I deployed it on Kubernetes first using Docker and then using Argo CD and EKS, that is Amazon EKS. I documented everything on GitHub using architectural diagrams, screenshots, and whatever I could use. If you want to see the documentation of my project, you can check GitHub repo link I shared in the description. You can find it in the description. So now you may ask, why did this work? Because it wasn't just a basic project or a basic toy project. It showed multiple tools working together in a production like setup, right? So that's why it worked. And recruiters also love that. One tip I would give to everyone is don't waste your space in your resume with like a lot of small projects, like six, seven small projects. Try to build total number of three projects and at least one, a very big project that covers multiple tools and like it is completely production grade level. So that will help you a lot in your resume. Of course, it wasn't easy. In the beginning, I doubted myself a lot. In the early stage, I failed a lot of interviews as well at very good companies. I just wasn't ready at that time, I think. But instead of quitting, I used those failures to understand what the interviews actually demand. And for me, another struggle was consistency. So after long working hours, some days I didn't feel like studying, but I forced myself to put in at least one hour every single day. And to be honest, that made the complete difference. It wasn't about like studying eight hours a day. It was more about never skipping a day. So how did I actually get my first DevOps role? That is. I'm currently in. So here's the story. So one day I noticed a company page had liked my post on LinkedIn and the company was where I'm currently working right now. I went to their website and then checked their career page. So an opening, instead of just applying, I sent a cold email with my resume and a personalized cover letter. And that email just got me an interview. And over the next three months, I went through three rounds that is cultural, technical, and final discussions. Finally, in March of this year, that is 2025, I got the offer. At first, it was just a one month contract to test my communication and teamwork. After that, it kept on increasing and I proved myself. And I'm, obviously, I'm currently working with them as well. So it is currently going on. And that's how I became a remote DevOps engineer. 
So before I wrap up this video, let me share the lessons and advice I learned throughout my journey. First is consistency beats intensity. Even one hour counts. Like even if you give one hour every day, it will always compound and it will always add up and you'll always have results in long run. You don't need to like study six hours, eight hours, 10 hours a day. If you are even giving one hour, two hour or three hour, it's enough. Trust me, just stay consistent, show up every day, learn every day, never skip a day. Second one is learning in public actually works. Your LinkedIn is also your portfolio. So keep sharing whatever you are learning every day. Share it, post it, and you know, like document it. Just keep learning in public. It will always benefit you in a longer run. Third thing I would say is documentation matters. I already knew about this from the beginning as well. And currently I'm working, so I know exactly how much documentation matters in your actual work as well. So always document your projects in a very good way. Always have like prerequisites, steps to set up, steps to deploy, and whatever steps you need to like run that project so that anyone can read that project, read that documentation and deploy that project and use that project. So your documentation should be that good. So always focus on documenting your project in a very, very good way. GitHub readmes, diagrams, your blogs will set you apart from others. So focus on documentation a lot. Number four, I would say is networking is equal to relationships and not referrals. So focus on creating genuine relationships. It will help you in building a good network. So focus on building genuine connections, genuine relationships rather than just you know, asking for referrals and all of those things. On number five, I would suggest and I would say that focus on projects rather than certifications. That's what I thought. Like, I'm not saying that certifications are not important. If you want to do it, you can do it and it will always help you. But projects in your beginning, projects are, projects should be your main focus. Projects prove skills. So yeah build good projects, understand how everything works. That is the most important thing. After that, you can focus on certifications and all of those things. And on number six, I would say like always seek feedback. Like your mentors can accelerate your growth. First of all, find some mentors for yourself so that you can take feedback from them regularly on your resume, on your projects, on your documentation, on your learning strategy, your roadmap. You should take feedback regularly from your mentors, I would suggest. Like once in two months or once a month, once in two months, once in three months, you should definitely take feedback from your mentors. And the seventh and the last advice I would give is cold outreach actually works. So don't just apply for jobs. Try to find emails for the companies you want to apply for and then send cold emails, attach your resume, uh, personalized cover, cover letter. And don't just use, you know, like don't just copy paste from chat GPT or any other LLM. Actually, like actually give time to personalize it, add why you want to join them, why you are the better or why you are the best candidate for that position. And all of those things, it should be personalized and it should not felt like an AI generated, you know, cover letter or resume or anything you are sending to a company to approach them, right? And most importantly, last but not least, trust the process. It is very important. Everyone's timeline is different. For me, it took two and a half years. I know someone who did it in one and a half years. I know someone who did it in six months. So everyone's timeline is different. Stay consistent, stay focused, be patient, trust the process, and you will eventually get your first job in DevOps or in any of the role you are seeking job in tech. The key is not quitting. So don't quit and keep working hard, keep learning.
So that's my journey from civil engineering to DevOps engineering. If my story proves anything, it's this. Your background doesn't define your future. If I can do it starting from scratch with no coding or IT background, then you can too. And this is my first ever video. And from now on, I'll be making videos regularly and I'll be sharing my learnings with everyone on a regular basis. So comment down below what kind of videos you would like me to make next and what kind of videos would you like to see next? And of course, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video with someone who needs the motivation or who needs the guidance, how he or she can like transform their career and transition from a non-IT background or just anyone who is starting their journey in tech who wants to like build their career in tech, share this with the, that person. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.